There's no question that it takes a lot of energy to get us into space, but how exactly do the rockets that take us there do it? In this video, I'm going to tell you the basics of how a rocket engine works. That's right guys, today is your rocket science 101. Rockets work on the very basic principle of Newton's third law of motion. This law states that for every action there's an equal and opposite reaction. That means if I push on a wall, it's going to push back on me in the opposite direction with the same amount of force. So if a rocket engine combusts a bunch of gas and throws it out the back, it's going to push back on that rocket in the opposite direction. But rockets are not small. So in order for us to get up in the space, we need a lot of energy to get us there. To accomplish this, again, we rely on a very basic principle of physics. This basic principle is known as the law of conservation of energy. This law states that energy is neither created nor destroyed. Instead, this energy is just transferred from one form into another. The way this is done in rocketry is we store the energy in a state known as chemical potential energy and then we transform that chemical potential energy into kinetic energy or moving energy. This is done through a chemical reaction known as combustion. A combustion reaction is just a fancy way of saying blowing something up. This is the basic equation for a combustion reaction. This violent chemical reaction releases a lot of energy. The products of this combustion reaction, or these hot gases, are then funneled through a nozzle that speeds up the flow to supersonic speeds. From there, these hot gases are then ejected from the bottom of the rocket, and the rocket goes up. And just like that... So now that we know the basics of how a rocket engine works, I'm now going to have my friend Jason explain the different types of rockets and some of the difficulties in rocketry. I'm also going to ask him about his experience in designing and building his own rocket engine. Jason is studying to get his master's degree in aerospace engineering from the University of Central Florida, where I studied as well. Jason probably knows more about NASA than any other person I've ever met. So I wanted to give you a call and ask you, what is a rocket engine and how does it work? Sure. Well, there are many types of uh, rocket fuels for use in different environments. Um, the two used to launch people and cargo from Earth are liquid and solid fuel rockets. Solid fuel rockets are those that have the fuel and oxidizer components mixed together and then cast into a solid. Generally, aluminum powder is used for the fuel, and ammonium perchlorate is used as the oxidizer. Uh, solid fuels have a, a number of advantages over liquid fuel rockets. Uh, they're simpler to use, uh, and they're simpler to handle as well than liquid fuel. And uh, the only thing that's needed to ignite uh, solid fuel is a spark. Uh, however, the main disadvantage is that uh, once a solid fuel is ignited, it can't be stopped or throttled at all. Once it lights, it's gone. <laughs> uh, nice. The, one of the uses of uh, the uh, of solid fuels is for the white boosters on the side of the space shuttle. These right. are actually solid, solid rocket boosters. And uh, once they ignite on the launch pad, there is no stopping them at all. So they certainly pack a kick. That's awesome. Very cool. So would you say that solid fuels are used um, more commonly in model rockets then? Yes, that's certainly for sure, mostly because of the, the ease of being able to pack the uh, oxidizer and fuel into one solid piece. Gotcha. So what is the advantage of a liquid rocket then? Uh, a liquid fueled rocket, one of the uh, most important uh, advantages is that it can be throttled uh, and reignited later on. Uh, so, for example, if you are reaching the upper atmosphere, you can throttle down the fuel. Um, and if you're going to do uh, another maneuver in space, you can then turn the engine back on. Uh, a solid fuel rocket, you can definitely not do that. Right. So, essentially, it's it's better for more advanced rocketry, right? Yes, exactly. Okay, awesome. 
And so you did a senior design project kind of talking about the balances of these two different types of engines. Is that right? Yes, exactly. Cool. Can you tell me a little bit more about that? Sure. Well, uh, my, sign, uh, my senior design project was to design a, a G-class hybrid rocket fuel engine uh, and rocket to be used in a state competition to try to fly as accurately as possible to 2,000 feet. Um, and our hybrid rocket used a liquid oxidizer, which is a nitrous oxide. Uh, you use that in uh, sports cars and things like that. Nice. And uh, a solid nice. fuel uh, <laughs> PVC pipe. Uh, as part of the competition, we had to design and make the rocket and all of its components completely from scratch. So it was certainly a challenge, especially on a budget. Yeah, no, that's awesome. I remember you guys telling me about all, all the challenges you guys were facing while you were doing that. It's really cool. Yeah, yeah, it was tough, but we were happy to get through all the way to the end and making it, uh, making it to the competition. That's awesome. So how did it turn out? Well, we ended up having a really successful rocket. It was the, the highest achieving altitude rocket in the history of UCF competing at this competition. Uh, the goal was to get as close to 2,000 feet as possible, and we managed to get 1,635 feet. Nice. Congrats. Very cool. Thank you. So then, uh, can you talk about a little bit, why why is rocketry so hard? How come it seems to be such an issue for so many reasons? You know, we see rockets blow up all the time. Why Why is that? Right. Well, at the end of the day, a uh, rocket launch is simply just a controlled explosion, <laughs> as dangerous as that sounds. Uh, but really, the, the hard part in is how you go about controlling an otherwise dangerous and unpredictable explosion into a safe and useful and predictable thing is what makes it really hard, uh, especially when on top of the rocket you have sitting a multi-million dollar piece of cargo, or even more importantly, humans sitting on the top of a rocket. Um, so with the stakes that high, uh, failure is certainly not an option, to quote President Kennedy. Right. Yeah, no, that's that's a good point. You know, I think a lot of people don't realize that, you know, the astronauts or the cargo, like, like you talked about, are just sitting on thousands of pounds of explosives when they're sitting on yep. top of a rocket. And yep. you're right, yeah, it, the for propensity reason. for failure is very high. <laughs> Unfortunately, yeah, yeah, that's really cool. Uh, especially with the liquid-fueled rockets, which most rockets are, they're sitting on top of thousands upon thousands of pounds of kerosene, of propane. <laughs> so this certainly is uh, can be very catastrophic, uh, but every precaution is used to mitigate those uh, mitigate those uh, events from happening, and uh, instead you get majority of rockets. Uh, taking off perfectly and without problems, and that's what makes it so hard is trying to make sure all of the all of your T's are crossed and I's are dotted when it comes to lifting off. That's awesome. Well, thank you so much, Jason, for shedding some light on the subject. Yeah. So if you learned something new today, please hit the like button. If you want to see more content just like this, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Thank you all so much for watching and Godspeed.